and welcome to Finnish Training Solutions, the Anatomy Series, Part 6. So what are we looking at today? We're looking at the energy systems and their relation to exercise. So the learning outcomes for today's webinar is describe how carbohydrates, fats and proteins are used to help assist the production of energy. Explain the use of free energy systems during aerobic and anaerobic exercise. Okay, so quick question for you. Why does the body need energy? Why is it so important? Have a think about it, write that down, and then let me know the answer. Okay, welcome back. So the body needs energy too. What do we come up with? Hopefully, create movement. Produce force against objects. Generate heat. Replicate cells and tissues. Support neuro function. Maintain homeostasis. Live and function. So, quick question for you. If petrol is the main fuel needed to run a car, what is the main fuel source needed by the body? That was an easy one, hopefully. So, food for energy. We have carbohydrates, which equals four calories per gram. Carbohydrates can be found in glycogen, stored in the muscle and liver, excess stored as fat, unfortunately, and protein, four calories per gram. Found amino acids is broken down into. Excess is stored as fat. And then we've got fats themselves, nine calories per gram. Looking at fatty acids, stored around vital organs or adipose tissue. So energy sources themselves, what energy sources are we looking at? So energy comes from the breakdown of a chemical substance known as adenosine triphosphate, which you may know or seen before as ATP, which is common in muscular contraction as discussed in one of the other episodes. So what is an adenosine triphosphate? Well, it's the energy's currency of the body. The only fuel the human body recognises and uses, and without ATP, the body would cease to be alive. So there's a breakdown of, you've got phosphate, which breaks down into adenosine, and then two phosphate molecules, which equals adenosine triphosphate, which creates the energy. So adenosine triphosphate is a limited store of ATP within the muscles. It lasts one to two seconds, and once used, it has to be remade. Resynthesis of ATP comes from either the breakdown of creatine phosphate, so another chemical that's produced in the body, or certain nutrients eaten in the diet. So take a turn to explain how ATP breaks down to provide energy if you can. Okay, so energy systems themselves. There are three main energy systems to resynthesize ATP. These are the creatine phosphate system, the lactate system, and aerobic system. So the creatine phosphate system, how does it work? It utilizes creatine phosphate chemical, which is chemical energy, to remake ATP almost instantly. CP supply in the muscles are limited. Rapid energy for short periods when exercise intensity is at maximal is a form of the creatine phosphate system. And it does not require oxygen, fat, or carbohydrate. So we know that as anaerobic. No fatigue waste products. So you're looking at short, short events, no more than 10 seconds long. And this is give you an idea of how it's made. So let's go back to that again. Creatine phosphate plus adenosine triphosphate. So ATP plus creatine phosphate equals ATP plus creatine waste. So I'll give you another opportunity. Take turns to explain how phosphate creatine or creatine phosphate is used to remake ATP. Name some of the maximal intensity exercises that would use this system predominantly. Hopefully you come up with 100 meter sprint, javelin, shot put, 
golf and tennis swings, weightlifting and the high jump. So short durations, as I said, of zero to 10 seconds. We have the lactate system as well, used to store glycogen to remake ATP. Provides ATP when oxygen is not freely available within the cell. It produces a, it produces a fatiguing by the product of lactic acid. A burning sensation is the muscles. And one to three minutes of intense activity would be part of the lactic, uh, lactate system. High intensity, 60 to 95% of your maximum effort. So again, looking at anaerobic type based activity. And then what we're we looking at here, glycogen, the burn itself. So glycogen is broken down to three glyco uh, glucose molecules, which creates the ATP. Lactic lactate is then dispersed, which creates the burn. Take turns to explain how lactic, uh, lact the lactate system is used to remake ATP. And can you think of some activities that may be used predominantly for this system? So activities, we've got the 400 meter run, 100 meter swim, 200 meter swim, or even the hurdles. These are gonna be part of the lactate system. Okay, so we're now looking at oxygen or the aerobic system. So break down the carbohydrates and fat in the presence of oxygen. You're looking, it's gonna contain mitochondria. Waste products are carbon dioxide and water. It's for long duration activities, low to moderate intensity, of up to 60% of your maximum effort, but no more. It's going to help increase the CV fitness and will improve the delivery of oxygen to the working muscles, allowing the aerobic system to produce ATP at higher intensities. So aerobic equals with oxygen. So this is the aerobic system. This is the cellular mitochondria. So oxygen goes into the mitochondria with fatty acids, with glucose. Out would come carbon dioxide, ATP would be produced, and H2O, which would be from sweating. Types of activities, you'd be looking at long distance running, marathons, triathlons, long distance swims, long distance cycling. And this is just a quick recap and summary to help you understand what those different systems are and how they relate back to your one, two, five, and how they use, produced, and work. So just take some time to have a look through this section. This is in the book as well to give you more of an understanding. So this diagram shows you the intensities and durations. You've got the creatine phosphate system, the lactate system, and the aerobic system, showing you the percentage of total energy that's used and for how long. So hopefully I'll give you a brief overview of carbohydrates, fats, and proteins, and its production of energy, such as the adenosine triphosphate, and the different energy systems from the aerobic to the anaerobic um, energy systems. Again, there's more information found in your student manual, so please have a look. This is designed to give you a quick recap just to help you prior to your exam. I'm Ben, thank you very much, and I'll speak to you soon.